everyone, welcome back. As you guys can see, we are finally uncovering the project that everybody wants to see. So uh, this is our 2003 Peterbilt 379. Of course, it's got the good old 6NZ cat in this baby. If you guys have missed some of the previous videos on this and kind of where this project started, there has been a couple. Uh, I'll probably put them in the links below. There's a playlist for them. Uh, we went and picked this thing up a while ago. It's been sitting, it's been waiting for us, and now it is finally time to jump back on it. So uh, the thing that I want to try to accomplish today, which we got to go run out and get some stuff, is I want to kind of finish cleaning off the back section of this frame in preparation for our 36 inch bunk. This truck came with a big sleeper. Obviously you can tell it is a stand up top over here. I think it's an ultra top, I'm not really sure. Uh, we have a new top for it. We'll get into that a little bit later, but got a 36 inch bunk for it. But all of these steps, the tanks, the battery boxes, this truck had tanks underneath the door, steps in the back. We have new stuff for all of that, but we need to go ahead and kind of clean the rest of this truck off. Obviously, we got to do some cleaning, some painting, but that is what we're going to start. Now, obviously, some of this stuff has hook bolts. You can tell it's a little needs a little needs a little love right now. So one of the major tools that we lack to do this job is a set of good oxygen and acetylene torches. Uh, we don't have any. I feel like if you own a big truck, you automatically need to own a set of big torches. There's plenty of jobs that I know we're probably going to need, even some on the pickup truck stuff. Uh, but we're going to go run out and get a set of oxygen and acetylene uh, torches and just kind of cut some of those huck bolts off instead of trying to cut grind. Uh, torches make it much much faster that's what we used on the tanks to take the tanks off uh what we need to do first before we even leave is we need to go ahead and swap on our other front tires on the first gen because why not why why not just drive the first gen around nobody wants to see me drive a smart car around that we're back on the 20 by 12s all the way around got our racing numbers taken off the windows and we are as legit as can be one thing i want to answer real quick you guys always always ask me this question so i want to kind of go over this again most of you guys know we swapped a dana 80 disc rear in the back much wider than the factory rear in the first gen this all comes down to wheel studs so obviously in the back we went to um 9 16 studs in the back just because that rear end that's what that has the d250s the two wheel drives come with some really small i almost want to say half inch really short stubby studs that's kind of a weird setup with the way they have this front uh front configured so they're really, really short. They have a hard time with some of these bigger wheels. So what I did, uh, and because of the width in the back, I actually have two inch spacers on the front. Yes, I know, say what you want, but I have, uh, because of the spacers, they don't require a ton of length. So I have spacers that go to 916 studs. That way we have the same lug nuts all the way around and we have some proper engagement on all of the threads. So that is the deal in the front. That's why it's a little bit wider, even with a 20 by 12, two inch spacers in the front. Uh, overall, just some better thread engagement on those really, really short studs. I looked and looked and looked and I have not found one person that is able to swap the studs in the front ends of these d250s the four-wheel drive ones are a little bit easier but the uh i even went like i ordered like one of every single stud back when we were doing this could not find they're so they're they have such a big head on them that it was impossible for me to swap over to bigger 916 studs so the spacers is really the only way i kind of figured how to do that so that's the information on that let's jump in this baby let's uh let's fire this thing up
whatever just to get set up to do whatever you want to do. Doing what you actually want to do, yeah, it may take some time, but actually gathering everything that you need to do what you want to do, man, that is a that is a full-time job in and of itself. You guys can't see me, but we finally have the torches. I need to go grab one other thing so we can finally get back to the house. It is 2.30, already 2.30, so woo, we're gonna get something done, I promise. That is for sure. Hang tight. Every, all, the, all the batteries are dying. Every this is this is a Monday, so camera battery is dying. Brought my drone. The drone battery is dead. Woo! All right, we're, we're, we're gonna get through this. Let's turn on our fans so our truck doesn't overheat. We have got ourselves a Victor, Victor cutting torch head, whatever you want to call it. All right, so Victor cutting head, got that, got a cart, got oxygen, got a settling. Uh, finally, finally, it feels like one of those SpongeBob moments four hours later, uh, but it's really, it's really been like four hours later. But anyway, let's get back to what we're gonna do. We're gonna set up the torches, we're gonna get going. Um, so like I mentioned before, all of this, and even the exhaust sections up underneath there, um, and then the air tank and everything on the other side, all of this stuff needs to go. Obviously, we're gonna leave the uh, cross braces, um, and we are just going to cut off. I, I have I have new brackets. Um, we're just gonna cut the heads of the bolts off. It's gonna be much quicker. Uh, we're not gonna use a step. We actually have new air tanks. Um, so we're just gonna get going on this thing and start cutting some stuff up. Working our way down the frame, getting everything cleaned up. Wanted to pause for one second, really to kind of ask you guys stuff. And again, I'm the first one to admit that this is, you know, probably somewhat out of my league. I've, I've never messed with any of these things. I don't really know how the air systems operate completely on these trucks. So originally, way back when, I was like, man, this thing's got three air tanks. Maybe we don't need that one. You guys yelled at me uh, and mentioned something about it being part of the air dryer, I believe. So I want to kind of go over this a little bit with you guys. And maybe you guys can maybe drop some comments, uh, email me. DM me on Instagram um, and kind of help me out here. So uh, there was one passenger side tank right here. I kind of have these labeled, right? So um, I don't know where one and two go. One and two run all the way up 
up here. Now, this other one, which is what I saw originally, uh, this actually, this connects to this other tank up here. So these two tanks were joined by this one right here. That's what this third line is. So you got one air tank, two lines going to the front, not sure where those go. One of these connects to this other one. And then this line right here um, is the only other line on this tank. And this actually loops around and goes back all the way to this back air valve right up here. So I'm not sure if that's related to possibly the parking brake. Again, don't don't roast me. I'm not sure. I'm going to learn all this stuff as we go along. That's half the fun, right? So, and also, <clears throat> which I didn't actually see, which maybe has a little bit more to do uh, with some of this air dryer stuff down here, and I believe that's what that is, uh, but there's actually a fourth tank on this thing. So each tank that you see like this has a tank like this so uh, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to identify all the lines so I can kind of figure all this stuff out obviously a lot of this stuff is going to be new rerouted rerun um, but just trying to learn as we go so I kind of am familiar with this I'm not sure if this tank I, what I'm getting at is do I need four tanks do I need two? Um, this thing was set up for uh, a big sleeper, all that stuff. Uh, we're gonna kind of go back minimalistic with uh, with a 36 and really just a play vehicle. So I'm not sure if the stuff is needed. If it's not, um, I'd like to try and hide all of this stuff, obviously. So that's where a lot of this comes into play. So who knows? We're gonna start working on this side. Uh, this side's pretty much almost done. And we'll jump over there. She's like, I'm coming down to ground level. You can't keep me. Hey, you guys match. Hey, you can't come close. Very dangerous. Very dangerous out here. So unfortunately we did not get as far as I had hoped on this side with the batteries and that extra tank. Went ahead and just slammed my finger. Like, you know, you know it's bad when you instantly feel like you have to take a drill bit out and drill through your fingertip to get the pressure off. Yeah, did that, did that. Also one on the back, man, got me good. But what are you gonna do? Anyway, so Went ahead, cleaned up the frame. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get to that a little bit later on. Uh, we have a ton of cleanup to do. Apparently it's gonna rain again, so I gotta cover this beast back up. So one of the things that I wanna talk to you guys about, and I know that this swap, I'm, I'm walking up here as a, so this top swap, top swap. So <laughs> changing a stand-up ultra top to a flat top is, uh, is definitely a little bit more on the challenging side for a couple different reasons. So if you guys have watched the previous videos, you guys know that this, this top is actually loose. So there's two challenges that we have to overcome that I'm not exactly sure. I've looked and I haven't really found the exact perfect answer. I'm sure this can be done multiple ways. There's two things we gotta fight with. So you guys can see the radius right here. And you can see this big radius up here. The flat top uh, hole kind of just comes up right along here. So we have to change this ring or at least section a new ring piece in. So let me know if you guys have known somebody, talked to somebody, done it yourself. Have you ever went from a ultra stand up top to a flat top? Two things, what you did with this ring right here, should I go get a new ring or do you guys know of anybody who has a ring? You can get me a ring. I know there's a couple of truck places around 
uh, this area, Kentucky, that maybe I can go cut. My original plan was going to basically cut one down here, section it in. That way I do not have to unhook the entire back of this thing, which I really, really, really do not want to do. So there's that part. And then there's this part right here. So obviously you can tell this structure and this roof structure are made for this this top now when you go to this to the low top it actually only has this little flat shelf and then it comes up like maybe this high and then starts sloping back so uh, i've talked to a couple different people and i've heard that what they did is just cut this basically cut this down and drop it down and then just re-weld some of this aluminum uh, this flat part looks good uh, but it's obviously too tall this way so what should I do with that piece? Should I just modify that, section it down when I get the new top on and see what works? Because then obviously this, I believe this part would be the same. It just needs to come down. And then obviously this piece, this piece just kind of, here, let me get in the back here. This piece just kind of rivets to the back ring here, which I could do as well. So um, I just want to go ahead and, and try and get a game plan and get some parts if I need to because once this top comes off and it rains again, you know what I mean? So I just wanna try and be prepared and get as much as I can. If I need to get a new ring, if I need to try and source that new piece or what, again, I don't think there's really a uh, trucker's handbook on exactly what to do here, but let me know. Let me know if you guys have any experience with any of that. That would be greatly appreciated if you guys have any information on that. Again, send me a DM, send me an email. Comments are kind of eh, if, if, he, if, he, if you want to write a whole paragraph on that. But uh, reach out to me some way, shape, or form. I greatly appreciate it. Um, that's pretty much going to wrap up. We got a lot of cleaning up to do uh, before it rains. Wrap this up. We got some stuff in the shop that I need to clean up. So I uh, just want to say a huge, huge thank you again. I'm not going to keep saying thank you because every video, even though I mean it in every video. But a uh, huge thank you for all the support on the last video uh with all the news guys it uh, it means the world to me so thank you guys if you have not went and checked out the wrench work sale go check that out and that is going to wrap up this video i will see you guys tomorrow see you can we just take a second to appreciate how good this looks right now with all the stuff just off of it it looks really really good the frame is definitely a little bit crustier than uh than i had remembered but man the sleeper the sleeper should only really come to about here so it's it's gonna look good it's gonna i mean obviously it's not gonna look like it has a huge stretch on it but good enough with a 36 inch bunk i think so i'm excited to actually get that thing up there once we get all this cleaned up kind of start seeing what it's gonna look like heck yeah boy